Hey everybody, this is Robin Taylor, Taylor Freelance again, talking about our site block setup for the, for the Glock. Um, one of the things I've noticed over the years of being in the practical shooting sports is guys that go with Glocks usually come into the shooting sports with a standard length gun. They've got a Glock 17, they've got a Glock 22, they really like it, they start shooting it for a while, they start adding things like magwells and new sights and things, but they, they come to a point where the next addition that they're going to make to the gun is to go to a longer slide. And the only cost-effective way to get a longer slide, generally, is to go buy another gun. So they essentially throw away all of the investment that they had in the previous gun and go buy a new one. Um, along with that, the, uh, there's real advantages to mounting the front sight to the barrel, which I'll get into here in a minute. That isn't really possible in a traditional, uh, in a traditional Glock setup because the barrel's too short. But thanks to the modularity of the Glock system, you can do some interesting things with it, which is what I've got in my hand here. So this system was set up so that you could take a law enforcement trade-in Glock 22 or Glock 17, and for about $150 to $200 in parts, turn it into something that's easily a seven or $800 Glock 34 or Glock 17L, something really, something really sexy and actually outperform a 17L or a Glock 24. This particular gun is a Franken gun of sorts. The, this lower is, I think, started life as a Glock 24, and this upper started life as a standard Gen 3 Glock 17. Um, the only changes I've made to the system are the addition of a Lone Wolf Glo threaded Glock 34 barrel. Doesn't have to be Lone Wolf, could be a bunch of other things. And I've hung one of our sight blocks on the end of it. So there's a threaded 5.88 inch barrel in this gun. Um, Although it was originally set up to be a you know a four and a quarter or four and an eighth whatever those whatever the math works out the, whatever the millimeters measurement works out to be for a, for a Glock 17 it's now 5.88 uh, a Glock 17L is 6.00 but I don't think many of us are going to notice the 12 one hundredths of an inch especially because we made the sight block a little bit fat to deal with that uh, to deal with that very very slight difference in, in sight radius. The main trick with having a sight block on here is that the this front sight, instead of flopping back and forth like it normally would if it were mounted on the side, of moving all of this distance, and you'll see that here in a moment in the video, um, instead the front sight stays relatively motionless. Notice I said relatively, it still has to move this the distance of this gap right here. It moves that much, but that's all. And as a result, when you fire this, the, the front sight stays in your vision better. Instead of most guns, when they fire, they, they come up slightly and then the slide buries itself backwards. The rear front sight has a tendency to bury itself in the blur of the motion and you kind of lose track of it momentarily. The sight block, on the other hand, kind of stands up and says, here I am, here I am, here I am, and you can see it the whole time. In the 17L, we've had to very much skeletonize the heck out of this to get the weight down far enough where the pistol will cycle. All of the Glock 9mm, whether it's a 17, a 34, or a, or a 17L, all the slide barrel assemblies weigh exactly the same amount. So by going to a sight block system, the barrel and the shroud are extra weight. So we're shooting a little bit heavier slide combination than is normal. Um, so you get some recoil absorptive characteristics from that. But you have to be careful about not underloading your ammunition too much. Uh, on this particular gun, I've gone with a progressive recoil spring in order to in order to make it even more reliable. On the Glock 22, however, when you're shooting 40 Smith and Wesson, the, the 40 guns are not that way. As you go from the standard length Glock 22 to the 35 to the 24, the slides get progressively heavier. And so when you mount a a sight block onto a Glock 22. Now you're coming more into the weight range of a Glock 35, 
It's actually a little lighter than a 35, if I remember correctly, but you get the full sight radius benefit of a Glock 24. One of the things you'll notice on the guys that run this full 6-inch 24s at the current modern USPSA 165 power factors, one of the first things they do is they start putting chin cuts on the slide, taking weight out of it in different places to try and lighten it up. By going with, a, going with this system, we've already put a chin cut on this. This whole system is Swiss cheesed out on the inside, so you end up with the weight, the desirable weight range of a Glock 35 without having to go send your, your expensive Glock 24 off to a gunsmith. To get all the weight taken out of it. It's already on a diet. Uh, lastly, in addition to the sight not moving around, the lone wolf barrels we're using, and a KKM works just as well, a lot of people prefer those, uh, they allow the use of, of cast bullets. You can't use cast bullets in a Glock at all, not that many of us use cast bullets anymore, but as far as a practice load, uh, cast bullets can be really an economic way to go, especially if you're rolling your own. So with this barrel, you can do that. Um, with a Glock barrel, you can't. So anyway, it's quite a, it's a package of stuff. Most of which are, are subtle. People don't notice these, right? Don't notice things like, oh, by the way, I can shoot lead bullets. And oh, by the way, the weight is right where I want it to be. And oh, by the way, the sight doesn't move as much until they start playing with it. But that collection of features brought into a gun that, that a lot of shooters already own but haven't been able to modify up to be really competitive in the games uh, makes the sight block setup a really good way to go.